everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today I would like to talk to you about using board games effectively in the classroom. So before we get started, I thought I would talk a little bit about my credentials. I have taught in private schools and I've homeschooled my children. I've taught everything from kindergarten, but mostly I've taught middle school and high school math, although I've done a bit of English, I've done a bit of history. And one thing that I've done over my decade long of teaching is use board games in the classroom. Now, while teaching was my job for many years, my full-time job now is running the Dice Tower. Now, the Dice Tower is a website where we review every board game that comes out. There's a ton of different board games that come out, and me and a group of other people, we try to play as many as we possibly can, and we talk about them through an audio podcast and a video show of which you're watching now. But let's talk about board games now. There's a lot of people who still don't realize just how many good board games that there are out there. Most people only really know the famous ones. They know Monopoly, they know Scrabble, they know Uno, they, you know, you know these popular games or chess. And everyone knows these games and some people love them and some people hate them. But what you don't realize is that there is a wide world of gaming out there that you may never have heard of. A lot of people don't like board games or don't play board games, and there's a lot of different reasons. The boring, people say, oh, I don't want to play a board game. Uh, or maybe they say that the games are too long. Maybe you've played a game of Monopoly that it's taken hours and hours and hours and hours until finally someone rage quits on it. Or maybe they're just lucky. You just roll the dice and see what happens. I roll the dice and move around, and the first person to get to the end of the table or the end of the board is the winner of the game. Or maybe there's not enough luck. I'm playing someone in chess. It doesn't matter how good I try, they're going to win every single time, even if I study all the books that there possibly is. And so there's all these different reasons, but the biggest one is people say all oh, board games are for kids. I cannot emphasize enough how far that is from the truth. There is tons of board games out there for adults and for kids, and a lot of great games where adults can play kids on the same level. And there are many, many great games now which have eclipsed Monopoly and Scrabble and are really fun. Maybe you've heard of some of these games, like Catan, a game in which you are connecting roads and settlements and trading with other people. Or games like Ticket to Ride, where you're connecting routes all across America or whatever country, you, the version, the Ticket to Ride you have. Or Pandemic, where together you are stopping and working together and cooperating to keep diseases from taking over the globe. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be talking about uh, gaming in the classroom and I'm going to be doing more videos where I'm very specific and talk about some games and how to use a specific game in the classroom. But I wanted to give a few reasons as to why one should game in the classroom. First of all, it's a change of pace. As somebody who is constantly working on lesson plans and things, ah, you know, after a while the kids get bored. You play a board game with the kids, you bring a gaming into the classroom, it's going to be something different and unique for them. It's also really fun! I mean, how many times have you talked about teaching in the classroom and you remember teachers who were boring and teachers who were not that interesting, but you remember things that were fun? And there's definitely a correlation between fun and learning. Sesame Street's whole concept is built around this, where fun becomes learning. Also, it's fun for you. I mean, I like teaching the quadratic equation a lot, but I mean, there comes a certain point where you're like, okay, guys, this is how the quadratic equation goes. And even teaching can become a, a droning uh, aspect for the teacher. However, this is a nice change of pace and makes things fun for you. And 100%, it is an excellent way to teach. There are many different senses and different things that you will remember things by. We talk about using music for memorization purposes or mnemonics and other different aspects. But games are an excellent way to bring around a lot of concepts. Uh, there's an excellent way to teach different languages. I taught uh, English as a second language in Korea for almost 10 years. And using board games was an excellent way to teach English to the students there. It teaches kids how to think properly. And we all know that they need to do that all the way up to adults. It teaches uh, logic. 
Logic is one of the few things I think that is not taught enough in schools these days, and games will teach you very logical skills as you go through them. It teaches you social skills. There's, you know, the whole complaining, oh, Facebook and all these social media is ruining our social skills and talking to each other. A board game, you are sitting around the table talking to somebody else. It forces you to learn how to win and how to lose. And it also teaches strategy. And strategy to win a game is one thing, but to use strategy in life. Why are you doing what you are doing? How is your business going to succeed? How are you going to excel and succeed at what you do in life? You need to know strategy and board games teach all these things. So let's talk about some golden rules of gaming. So you're a teacher, whether you're a homeschool parent or whether you are in the classroom, what are some rules of teaching that I think are useful to know? First of all, you're the boss. You're the game master. You can do whatever you want. You can break the rules of the game. I know, I know, it seems anathema when you get a game and you take the rules out and you can change it, but you can change them to fit your classroom. The game might say it's two to six players and you have seven kids. Okay, do what you want. It, as long as it works for the kids, you, you can break the rules. You can make new rules up. When I taught in uh, Korea and I taught English, I might play a game and say, all right, if you s don't speak in English in this class, because it was an English immersion class, then you have to pay $100. That's a rule that I added. But you can keep things flowing in the game. You also can change the game completely and make maybe it's half as long or longer. Now, these things are things that will take time, but you are the ending of the, you are, like I said, the game master. You can decide what the game is, how the game works, and the end goal result. And you can tilt the game. What? Are you promoting cheating, Vassal? Well, not exactly, but things are only fun if they're exciting for kids. Have you ever seen a kickball game where one side scores 20 runs against another team and has gotten one? That's not very fun, and so you can do, as a game master, you can make things, you can change rules, you can do things subtly behind the scene to keep the balance of the game exciting all the way to the end. Another golden rule here of gaming is if a game doesn't go over well, immediately stop or switch it. You know, I bring out something. This is a golden rule for gaming in general. If I'm playing a game with people and they're like, ah, we hate this game. Great. Move it aside. Because remember, if they're not having fun, they're not learning. And, well, that's basically the general principle of that. We also need to keep games exciting, quick, and fun. It's not fun when someone's sitting there going, hmm, 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 And have you ever played a game of chess where it's total silence in a room? Now, I'm not saying chess and quiet logic games can't work in some situations, but you want the game to be exciting. You want people to be involved with the game because that's what they'll go home and that's what they'll talk about. And the measure of a game's fun comes from the kids and not you. You might sit there and go, well, this doesn't seem like it's that great of a game. Yeah, but you're not playing it. Are the kids having a great time? Then it's going over well. And the next golden rule of gaming is you need to know the game. If you don't know something, then make it up. Okay, so what I mean by this is you need to know how to play a game. So you know, need to know the rules inside and out. And the kids say, well, what happens in this situation? Instead of pulling out the rule book and pausing everything, just say, well, this is what happens. You can decide that on the spot. And that keeps everything flowing. The game flow, the flow in the classroom needs to be constantly just moving, and that will help things along. All right, now let's talk about things to avoid. <laughs> First of all, don't win at all costs. This isn't about the best player. If you're involved with the game, shame on you if you need to win. You don't need to beat the students down uh, with your superior strategic skills, no. Uh, but at the same time, you need to also teach the kids that winning at all costs is not the point of the game. It's not about who the best player is, it's about having fun and about learning. And so therefore, you need to not allow fights. You're like, oh, they'll resolve it. No, that's where you need to step in. And one of the good things about gaming is it can help you teach and uh, work through conflict resolution. Uh, also, another thing to avoid is to not allow friendly co cooperation, collusion, where you know Martha and Susan are working together or Billy and John are working together and Billy's like, here John, you can have all my money or whatever, I'm going to make you win. And again, that's a bad thing to do in a game, it's a bad thing to do in life and so it's your goal as a teacher to keep things moving, to keep maybe to play a completely cooperative game or to put kids 
on different teams who might not normally be together. That sort of thing is, again, a life skill that you have the opportunity to teach while playing games. Other things to avoid, don't let the game slow up. You'll notice this is a bit of my mantra as I go through this. Just keep things moving, moving, moving. Uh, Downtime, where someone's sitting there bored waiting for their term, should definitely be kept to a minimum. You do not want to ever be in a spot where everyone's just sitting there and waiting for someone else to do something. You also want to avoid being the same. Don't be rigid and unflexible. These are the rules of the game. This is how we play the game. No. It be... Just be flexible. Be able to change. Something might work for one class that does not work for another class. And you also don't have to finish the game, which is, you know, probably going to happen anyway because many games are longer than 50 minutes in classrooms. Uh, Class sessions often, you don't have that much time to get everything in. But it's not about finishing the game. It's about playing the game and learning and having a fun time. All right, let's get off the negatives. Let's get to the positives. What should you do when teaching games? Keep it fair. Now before you say, wait a minute, you said tilt the game earlier. Well, sure, but you want to make the game as fair as possible and you want to be able to bring games in where kids have a bit of a chance. And again, this is an opportunity to teach kids the uh, aspects of fairness and getting along with other people. And you need to simplify things if necessary. Now I bring in word games and things and again, this is a great opportunity. Is it a vocabulary word that someone doesn't understand? Here's a teaching moment where I can teach what that word means. And we also have to realize that kids are smarter than we think. You know, kids are going to pick up things. You'll be like, oh, I hope they can figure this out. Guess what? They probably can. Uh, Other do's that we have when uh, teaching games. First of all, we have do change the rules if necessary. I already mentioned this. You're the game master. You can change anything you want to make the game flow or work in your classroom. Explain everything thoroughly. Another thing that games do is they teach listening skills. As someone who teaches people games all the time, I cannot tell you the amount of times I've taught adults who do not listen at all when I explain something. And uh, maybe I've fallen into that category myself. This is something that will help teach children listening, and we all know they desperately need that. Uh, Do enforce penalties and rewards. This is a great way to keep everybody involved. Maybe being involved in the game will help their grade in the class somewhat. I'm not saying winning or losing should affect their grade, but being involved. I already mentioned before when someone spoke in a different language than English for the English immersion, then there was a penalty for being involved in that or uh, a reward in saying, hey, I'm looking for the most innovative, intriguing way to play this way. And when there's some kind of reward on the line, then the kids get a lot more excited about the game. Also, improvise. Again, this is something that I keep kind of harping on here, but being able to say, oh, what do I do at this point? Just to be able to make something up. And as you do these more often, you will be prepared for that. And in fact, set up in preparation. Not only should you know the game, it's good when the kids come in and you are already prepared for the game. And you're like, look at this. This is how this works. And you're ready to explain and go through the game. There's a lot of resources on the internet that teach games and that go through games. And you have the opportunity to go and prepare and be ready, as you should be for teaching in general. Uh, So those are other do's for the games. Play a variety of games. Just because something works super well doesn't mean that you want to do it all the time. You want to be as varied as possible. And it be also because just kids learn differently. And the number one do when playing a game is do have fun. Yeah, fun. I can't emphasize enough how much having fun makes people learn better. Why do people play games? Why do kids play video games? Because they are fun. There's a lot of fun involved. And so many times throughout my childhood, throughout high school, throughout college, throughout life, doing a fun activity helped me remember something, helped me learn something. And so having fun is the main goal of this. This is just a basic overview. In the future, I'm going to be talking about specific games. I've done top 10 lists, which you can look up on our channel, gamesandeducation.com, and games to teach English, games to teach English, games to teach logic, and those will help you, but I'm going to talk about specific games and how to utilize them in the classroom. And of course, you can always email us and ask questions about gaming at my address, tom at dicetower.com. Until next time, thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower games and education. I hope you use them in your classroom and it's going to be a fantastic blast, I promise.